Hi, my name is James, and I paint miniatures. This is Spoon 37 Minis. Welcome to What's on the Bench, episode 6. This time we're continuing the Goliath Gang, which last time you saw me base coating the Bugman's Glow on, having dry brushed lead belcher all over. Here I'm applying the second coat of Bugman's Glow, so I'm basically reinforcing the skin tone here. So it's less obvious than painting it on for the first time, but it really helps a lot to have two thin coats so it's not to obscure any detail, but to give it a good solid base which you can then shade and highlight. Now I'm using my favourite uh, Games Workshop S layer brush and Buckman's Glow. It's been watered down slightly so as to make it thin and as you can see I keep going back to the palette to get a little more. And I'm just painting on very very carefully, nice and slowly the second coat of Bugman's Glow around the face at the moment, but I will bit by bit go around and do the whole model. You'll notice if you watched the previous video, which was What's on the Bench Episode 4, that I'm doing this in exactly the same pattern as before. This ensures that I don't miss any part of the model or forget anything. Bearing in mind that I've been known to upload pictures to Instagram saying this model's finished, having not painted the hands or something like that, this is actually a lot more important than it sounds at first. Now I wasn't sure about um, actually showing the second coat, so I, it did occur to me it might actually be quite dull, but I recorded the footage and I put it up for the, um, the Hive Tyrant, the Metal Hive Tyrant in the red flesh colour. So I thought I might as well start with that on the Goliath so you can actually see that I'm going through the same process every step of the way. The concession I make though is that I will not be showing the same step on every single Goliath. So I'll just show you on the gang boss and then take it as read that I've done second coats on all of them. Now I'm just taking my time to get in between all of the details, there's a lot of areas here which I want to remain a somewhat metallic colour afterwards, all of these strange you know, sort of collar and tubes and so on around the neck, uh, the straps on the back, the middle of which will be metal but the actual straps themselves will be painted brown to look like leather later on, but I'm just trying not to get paint on those bits if I can avoid it at all. Sometimes there will be some overspill and I can correct that later, it's just it just makes life easier if you don't have to go around correcting everything. Sorry about the thumb being in the shot here, it's just trying to rotate the painting handle in order to get into all of the angles that I need to. You will find when you paint these that you have to turn the model upside down from time to time, otherwise you don't actually get paint in the right places. Here I'm just painting a tricky area under the arm that has a, lot, a surprising number of uh, details in it. 
and one of the helpful things about doing a second coat is that if there are any details that you just skipped over because there was a, a deep recess the brush didn't go into when you go over it a second time you'll see that and you'll be able to put paint on it so there may be some areas where there's only just one coat but in a, a small area under the arm nobody's really going to notice but it just makes sure that there's paint there ready for the wash or shade and it also means that every part of the model is going to be painted eventually. So it just makes your life easier. Now, as you're painting, you will find that the paint gradually dries out. So you just see me going to the water part off to the left to get a bit more water to add to the paint in order to keep it both thin, but also a runny enough liquid that it will flow off the brush onto the model because if it dries out on the brush, you can't really paint. So you just have to keep that balance between having it, you know, watered down enough to paint with, but not so watered down that it doesn't stick to the model. It, it's something you learn with time. One of the reasons why I'm using such a small tip brush, such as the S layer brush, is for areas like this around the hand where there's a lot of awkward bits to get into, painting the fingers, again I don't want to get too much paint on the handle of the hammer or on the bandage around the actual hand, even though you know these bits will be painted over it probably wouldn't matter that much, I'm just trying to be careful. Now this isn't going to be as long a video as some of the others I've uploaded recently. This is mainly just to get the Goliaths to the stage where I can start doing layering highlights which is a little bit more involved than some of the stuff I've shown so far so that might involve quite long videos and I don't want to have them, all of that highlighting, sort of tacked on the end of this video so I'd rather do this as a complete update, get through it a little bit quicker and then be able to show you layering highlights and how all of that works later on. So in addition to this, um, I've also been painting the metal hive turret, so you can expect an update to that quite soon, really to get it to the same kind of stage as these uh, goliaths. It's just that it's a large metal model in bits, whereas these are 10 plastic squad members or gang members. Um, so obviously the, there's a bit more repetition with these, but then again the, the metal hive turret's a much larger model. So, look forward to an update on that coming soon. Just finishing off the model here, making sure I've got paint into all of the details around the arm. It's a bit tricky around the arm with the shoulder pad because there's all kinds of stuff attached to his arm. There's a the shoulder pad in the way, there's cables, there's all kinds of things. So just taking a while to finalise that and then doing the hand and the fingers and that will pretty much finish it off. Okay, so having applied two base coats to the model, 
you leave it to dry for a bit which is easy because of course you'll be painting the whole squad of them as you can see in the background and then the next step is to use a wash now the games workshops call these shades but i'm actually using the army painters flesh wash here so it's really easy you get a large brush this is a size 5 brush if your brushes are numbered and you just apply it it's a sort of transparent brown paint that's designed to run into all the recesses and you'll see when i'm done it should reveal a lot more detail that's already there but because you've only painted in a kind of single solid color so far you can't see quite as clearly all of the details this just gives it a bit of contrast Now the idea is to cover every part of the skin with uh, this flesh wash um, and just make sure that every part of it is covered, rather as if you were going over it again with the uh, base colour, but obviously being a wash it will run off into all the recesses and show up all of the detail that's on the model. Um, there are all kinds of colours of washes and techniques that you can use them for, this is probably the most basic form of using a wash just to you know use a brown wash over skin you can also use it on a model like this over some of the um, metal parts to make them look a bit more dirty or well worn or used um, just you know to add some brown streaks or some brown marks or what have you while still largely retaining the appearance of the metal You'll find that wash is very, very forgiving. You don't have to be quite as careful about uh, painting within the lines as you do with conventional paint because being part transparent, it doesn't actually show all that badly if it's up against an edge or even if it goes slightly over that edge. So you can use a huge brush and be you know, fairly liberal with your use of wash on a model and usually you know nine times out of ten it will be absolutely fine and of course it's not that hard to paint over if you do make a real mistake now with hindsight it would have been better on that model to use a slightly darker brown wash. The wash didn't have as much of an effect as I might have liked, so I'm showing you here on one of the other Goliaths that I've painted in a much lighter skin tone, where it will have a much more dramatic effect, because obviously his skin is lighter, the flesh wash is the same colour, so the contrast will be all the greater. This is a little bit of bonus footage. I wouldn't normally have shown this model, because as I say, it's not my plan to show every single Goliath model, but I did paint some with slightly darker skin, and I did paint some with slightly lighter skin. So this is just the lightest one, and the flesh wash worked tremendously well on this one. I think going back to the original one, I probably should have used a darker wash like Agrax Earthshade or Army Painter Strong Tone, which would be a much darker brown wash, because obviously the Bugman's Glow is such a dark colour to start with. Same principle applies though, you just use a large brush, the wash doesn't need to be watered down much if at all, and you just daub it on every part of the model where it is needed and it will naturally run off into the recesses. The only thing I will say about doing this is you don't want to leave it off any part of the flesh that you've painted. If you only paint like half of say the shoulder, it's going to leave a mark where it ends, which is called a tide mark. You generally get this with inks and washes. Now, in a modern wash like this, it's not too bad, but it can still happen. So paint the whole surface if you can. Right, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell-shaped icon so you can see when the next video will be out. I hope that will be soon. Thank you for watching.